Hi, I'm Owen from Square Blue, and I'm going to take you through a super quick tutorial on how to use the Utheme Pro Builder. It's going to be really quick, I'm going to teach you only the basics so you can get up and running as fast as you possibly can. Okay, before I get started, if you like my videos, please, please, please do subscribe. But let's get cracking. Before you start, if you're not used to Joomla, everything runs off of the menus. So I would think about very carefully about your structures, your menus, uh, your drop downs, everything, and I would just do all of this stuff first before you get into the Utheme Builder. But let's go into the Builder because that's what the tutorial is about. If you come over to uh, Pages, you'll see there's a dot next to something. It means it's either the active one or something's been done. Because we're on the home page, this is the active one. Um, and you can see I can just hover on things, click on them, and I can just edit the text. Uh, same with the image. I can hover on it, I can click on it, and I can upload the new image. Um, one thing you should notice if you scroll down here, you've got this little icon which is a target. If you click on it, it will take you to that place on this page. And the same one here, if I, if I click on this target, then it will take me to the place in the builder. Um, so, uh, first thing you need to really know is there's sections, which is this part, the next section, the next section. Um, and you can create a new section by clicking this plus button. And within sections, you would obviously have rows. You can create a new row by clicking this plus button. Um, and in rows, you could have columns. Now you click this pencil button, and you could choose this icon. And now you could choose your columns. You could choose halves, thirds, or you can use unbalanced versions as well if you want to. Uh, so I choose that one, and I go back. You'll see it's created me all of the uh, columns in that row, but not in the row below. If I want to use that row, then I have to click this pencil button. And then I can do that one. So if I do halves just so you can see the difference. Now you can see this one is halves, and this one is. Um, I'll just stick some things in there so you can really see it a little easier. Uh, and in here as well, so you can see it easier. And you see when I put in the images, um, if I can now go to this section, you see that it actually adds a dummy image, which is kind of helpful to see where things are. Um, so now you know how to do sections and rows. Uh, I will delete this one because I don't need it. Uh, if I know what I'll do is I will save it. You click this icon here, you can save it to the library. I give it a name. Uh, I normally type with a capital section and then I just give it a name like that. And now if I want to reuse that, I can just um, go to my library and I can go to my layouts. And now I've got my section. I need to make sure it's on the insert at bottom or insert at top rather than replacing the whole layout. And then I click my section, and you see the same sections down the bottom. Um, you have options for sections. You click this little pencil. This is where you'll find your background images. Um, and on any item, whether it's a section or an element, you have settings, and that's pretty much how you control uh, the style, the layouts, all sorts of things. So if I change this colour to secondary, you see the colour changes. I don't need to do that, so I'll leave it. Um, if I if I want to change the positioning, the margin, I can make that like a extra large margin. It makes it huge. Again, I don't really need to do that, so I'll leave it. Uh, maybe it's too small, is it? I don't know. It's on that one. Um, I can set the breakpoints. As soon as I set the breakpoints, I now have this option to change the block alignment. Um, Again, I don't really need to change any of this, so I'll set, change it back. But you get the idea. Uh, it's the same with sections. You're able to change the colour of the section just by doing that. Uh, what you might need to remember on those sections as well, when you change the colour, um, you might want to do this preserve text colour, which will allow you to change the colours manually using the settings that you choose. Another thing you'll notice on uh, this is you, you have lots of things in one column. You just click this little plus button here, add it, and now you can choose any of the options. It's got lots and lots of options out of the box. You have multiple item options as well, which I'll cover in a second. But you also have pro presets. So these are things that have been built by Utheme that you could choose. So if I want a grid, I can check, and there's all these grids that already exist nicely styled I could add them to my layout and if I do add them to my layout it'll come down the bottom here um, oh no sorry it's added it to 
this bit because I press the plus button. If I do add it to my layout, it's automatically going to take the uh, fonts and the colors and everything from my existing theme. So uh, let's just show you some um, dyna uh, some multiple elements. So you've got grids and stuff like that. You just have to add an item, um, type of some content or whatever. In fact, it might be just as easy for me to show you the one that I made. Um, this one, you can see these are all items. When I click onto one, it's got the images and you can add the alt and everything else. Now, one of the very, very cool things you can do is you can make this a dynamic item um, by clicking here, changing dynamic content, changing it, for example, to the article, which would then choose the article that was on the menu item for this menu. And you choose the multiple item source. So I could choose, uh, I don't know what this menu item is, but normally I could choose different things there. Uh, and then when I come here, if I change this down to the dynamic item, which is the parent of the article, and I come over to content, and I see this dynamic has appeared. And now I can choose the article title. The meta could be the content. Um, doesn't work very well. Get rid of that. Um, what have you done? Um, I'm guessing that this might be multiple items or something, so I won't fiddle with it too much, but you get the idea. Have a play with it. This is not supposed to be a detailed tutorial. Um, one thing you should also think, uh, I'll just save that. Well, one thing you should also know about is the templates. Um, templates are for things like a category blog, which has multiple items, or maybe uh, an individual blog post where you want to style one page, but all of the blog posts pick up that styling. Or, or if you so, if we've got a blog page here, I don't think we have news, that would be one. So here's a news page, so you can see that this is post index, which is under category blog. Um, so this type of menu item will be a blog menu item. So if I go into this, what we'll see is a slideshow, and you'll see this icons next to it, they mean that it's taking dynamic content. So as you can see, it's got dynamic contents on there. So this is actually from all the demo content in the page. And you can see even including the image. Oh, no, it hasn't got, uh, no, it hasn't got the image. Oh, it has got the image, sorry, here, up here. So it's choosing the image from the article. Um, so moving on from that, you'll see the grid. Again, it's dynamic. And again, you'll see that it's choosing the different types of things from the article. So if we have a hundred different articles, it's just going to lay them all out here until it gets to the end one. This one's only got one, two, three, four, five, six, and this will be because of in here and the advanced. Um, okay, there's no quantity, but somewhere there is a setting being used to say it only loads six before moving on. I don't know where that setting is, but there is a setting. Ah, in fact, it will be taken from the menu item from Joomla as to how many are loaded for the intro in the intro articles. So now you've seen both of those things. I'm sure you're wondering about styling. Um, the first thing is layout, and then site. This is where you stick your um, logo name and everything else. Uh, you can do a nav logo, uh, inverse logo. You can use a mobile logo. So uh, you can also choose these icons at the bottom. And now I can see this is what my thing, and you can see there isn't actually a mobile logo here, but if there was, you could potentially be on this, which is called the dialog. And as you can see, uh, there's a dialog logo option. So if I add one there, it'll probably appear. If I go down the bottom here again, I'll make it back to full width. Um, you also have layouts in here for your header, mobile, top, bottom, sidebar. Top is everything above your main content. Bottom is everything below your main content. A sidebar is obviously a sidebar. Your footer is obviously the bottom part here. And your header is the top part here. So if you click on the header, I can choose a lot of different layouts for my, um, my logo, navigation, search, everything else. Social media icons, a whole lot. A lot of options in here. Um, you can also choose the dialog layout. So that's your uh, mobile often, that's the mobile layout, uh, you can, but you can, uh, sorry, it's the pop-out layout, 
you could choose the mobile here and then you could choose the mobile layout uh, so again loads and loads of options very very useful um, and so I'll skip like footer is here it's just another builder layout don't forget as well you can use modules as part of Joomla so if you're using a module it could be a bit of content that's used on multiple pages so this is saying dialog mobile and it's actually if I put it into mobile mode you'll see what it's doing so this is dialog mobile so it's got a headline no, it's not got dialog mobile uh, no this is not dialog mobile I don't know what this is uh, I'll work that out another time but the point is on a module you could be using this on multiple pages so say I have a call to action I would probably create it as a module and put it on every single page that way if I ever need to update it I update the module and all of the pages will update I won't have to repeat myself uh, and finally over to styling um, a lot of stuff is done for you in new theme um, the really cool thing is um, I can change the colors here so I have my primary and secondary background those are two key metrics that I would want to change uh, let's make it blue uh, if I save that I think probably on the home page there will be something um, there isn't have fun uh, but you can see that some things here have picked it up so this little thing here up the top here uh, this little thing so a lot of things have taken the primary color so immediately the website has started looking bluer than it was before when it's red now the cool thing is if I go back to style you can see there's a little icon here with a dot on it that dot means that I've edited something in here and when I go into it I see another dot on this primary background so I know all of the things I've edited and if I hover on it and click the X it goes back to red and then this also says it hasn't been edited there's pretty much um, the, it can control so many things from here easiest way to look at it is if I look at this and it says base and then text so now if I look at base and I look at text um, where's text have I missed it uh, it's probably just body actually um, but you can find all the things you're looking for so if I was to go while I'm in style if I go to here you'll see this button so if I now go to button you see that this one is a uh, button margin so this is probably just the default button if I wanted to add a border to it which is red uh, I now need to give it a border color or something probably um, probably need to give it a, a border size and all these things I'm not going to do too much because I'm just showing you a very quick tutorial but pretty much everything you can do is in here uh, out of the box so you don't really need to write that much CSS um, if you're familiar with bootstrap this is called UI kit it's something similar to that you can look on the UI kit website um, and this will tell you a lot of things in the documentation so if you understand breakpoints media queries all of those sorts of things you'll find that a lot of this stuff is in here um, now you don't need to use this website but I sometimes find it useful to do, for example, if I needed to know a breakpoint, I would understand that um, I can go on UE Kit and find out. Look, I could do UK Hidden as a class on any of the things that I'm using, and that would be hidden. I can do uh, this one, UK Hidden Small, UK Hidden Medium, UK Hidden Large, um, and any of those would just mean that that particular element is hidden only on so we're on a large device so if I do UK hidden large I'm going to show you now back in the pages and then home let's say let's say this customer part right so I'll click on that if I go into this section now click in advanced and I go to my classes now if I add this class uh, that section is now hidden and now if I go to the medium device it's appeared again so knowing about these classes can be useful because mostly everything is written for you and you don't need to reinvent the wheel with new CSS um, I'll just take that out because not necessary at the moment um, 
so there you go. You, you you really don't need to do a lot of the work yourself. If you understand Flexbox and you understand how things work in CSS, you'll be able to use the settings on pretty much any element to uh, to style it and to come up with things. You will need to write some CSS code, but it is very, very minimal. Um, and that's it. That's all I'm going to show you for today because I think that is like the basics and you could probably get through and start working on a website and then afterwards you could probably start doing some of the more advanced things don't forget to set up a child theme before you start um, don't forget to check it's all configured properly in the um, advanced settings so in here you would set up your API key in here you would set up your advanced settings and your child theme and you could also do a system check and make sure there are no issues found that would be very very important before you start Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, thank you, appreciate you. Please subscribe to the channel.